Okay, I think we're back and um, ready to go with this final um, session of our training. Um, so thanks again to everyone for sticking around and um, you know paying attention and um, hopefully you're getting up something out of this. And what we would ask you to do is fill out an evaluation form. Um, so I'm going to put it in the chat right now. And so before, you know, today or whenever you have time, um, you know, fill out the evaluation form that really helps us um, have feedback on what you all get out of this and what you would like to see, any comments that you would have, um, you know, et, et cetera. So um, I just sent it through the chat. It's a link to the TBAS website and a form that you can fill out pretty easily. So if you don't mind filling that out um, after the training, um, then we'll have a record of everything and have some feedback from you all on how we did. So um, that can be anonymous if you want it to be. So um, feel free to fill that out and appreciate it. So with that, I'm going to start on TBS mobility areas. Uh, no outstanding questions, right, Matt? On the out so far. Okay, so um, TBS mobility areas, what are they is going to be our um, primary uh, goal in talking about what mobility areas are. And then we're going to talk about the types, how you manage them, um, what you can do with them in terms of service summary totals, observed and estimated performance, land use market analysis, SD market analysis, mobility, multimodal sheds, uh, TDP, TDP, SD data, and land use jurisdictional summary, mm -hmm. and mobility area interoperability with other TBAS tools. We've already kind of taken a look at um, we, what some of that interoperability is, we use, just use it in the network accessibility. We use it in service area definition, or at least we talked about it. And, um, so we've already looked at this from different areas. So, um, so what is a mobility area? It's a, um, service performance and market reporting inside a defined geography and a geography can be anything, it can be a service area definition, it can be a rural areas, could be corridors, could be taxable areas, could be any geography. And what makes the mobility areas um, unique in TBEST is that you're able to create sheds. Um, so the sheds can be transit sheds, they can be walk sheds, bike sheds, wheelchair sheds, drive sheds, um, and all of that is to promote some level of shared mobility assessments. So if we're evaluating transit, we might wanna know the walk shed um, through the, the street network to a route where set of stops. Um, likewise, from a park and ride, we probably would wanna know the drive shed um, to a park and ride or from a park and ride um, within a certain drive distance or time. Right, and so all of those are possible to create and manage inside of TBEST. And so our example here is that we have in TBEST Explorer for this is Fairfax in um, in Virginia, Fairfax County. Um, so we have a couple of mobility areas defined: Allerlington and Alexandria, and we've um, used the shapefile to bring those in, and they show up here in the TBEST map where we can do analysis on them. So. Um, uh, and this is where they're stored. We've talked about mobility areas stored in this folder before, and I think we've accessed them from there as well, but we're all going to do a little bit more with that today. So this is the, the mobility area definition, right? So where you have uh, a mobility area toolbar. And so that's something that you can access if you don't have it open already. Uh, under the view menu in TBES, uh, I'll just show it to you right now so everyone can kind of pop this up if you don't have it already. So under view, you have the mobility areas toolbar. And so that's the way I can turn it off and then turn it back on. So if you don't have that up already, I would suggest you just pull that up. That's what we're going to be using. Okay. All right. So from here, we have several options to define what our mobility area is defined as, and um, we'll start with the simplest first, um, which is in our list here, which is a point buffer or a linear buffer. 
So essentially what we do here is if you select the point buffer, um, then you would just click on the map and whatever distance you have defined here, um, you can define a distance. It will create just a regular old straight line buffer around your point. And you can hold the shift key down to add more or the control key. So you can continue to add point buffers randomly or you know, in context with what you're trying to, to do. Um, you also have a linear buffer where you would digitize a, uh, a line on the, on the map and it would create a buffer of the distance you have defined. So those are really kind of ones that you would expect just to have kind of simple buffers around a point or a line to create an area on the map that you can summarize information within. So we also have the ability to do walk sheds, bike sheds, drive sheds, and wheelchair sheds. And all of that data comes from an API um, that accesses open street map data. And when I say API, I mean application programming interface where it actually goes out to the web, uh, looks at the open street map data and creates a shed or basically an isochrone and brings that back and we display it in PBAS. So um, there's a service called openroutservice.org. Um, that's a really great service for web APIs to um, do a lot of work with OpenStreetMap. So we use that, it's a free service. And um, so we have it really integrated into PBAS. Um, yesterday when you were defining the uh, shortest path when you're de developing your routes, that's using openroutservice.org and the web APIs that go out to OpenStreetMap to define the shortest path. So we're using it heavily integrated with it already, but this is, takes it to a little different level where you have these um, sheds that you can define based on the OpenStreetMap data. Um, and so that includes walk shed, bike shed, drive shed, and wheelchair shed. So the transit shed is actually defined from your TBEST network accessibility build, and it is time based. So, um, so basically, whenever you click on the map, it will look for the transit um, stops that are near where you're at, and it will show you a des the destination stops. Um, and then the further away you get from the origin, the smaller the buffers around the destination stops will become. So it's a nice kind of visualization and quick way to show accessibility through the network, your current transit network, um, not going out to the web or anything using TBS transit network. The last one is a drive path. And so this actually uses the um, shortest path tool for you to create kind of a corridor basically, because what it's gonna do is gonna take that drive path and then it's going to just buffer around it. So it says, you know, you're creating a shortest path using your open street map data um, on the roadway network, and then you're just gonna create a buffer around whatever you create. So those are the options for the type definitions. And um, it's really a lot of robust data that um, is really well integrated to TBEST. And we'll take a look at how all this kind of works together. So here are some examples of um, mobility areas. And um, so uh, the top one is this conventional uh, quarter mile walk buffer. And this is just a straight buffer around the stops on a particular route pattern, right? So you can see how, you know, you have the circular, um, you know, kind of circles around this one. And so it's not well defined in terms of, you know, what accessibility on the street network. So this is that same um, route pattern, but this is showing the walk access access via the net with the actual road network or the sidewalk network, right? So you can see how it varies across, um, you know, the the geography and the, the stops that it is showing the accessibility from, right? So this is generated from the walk shed, um, and this is a five minute bike shed from bus stops with uh, greater than 50% zero vehicle household share, right? So this is the type of analysis that you can do in TBEST. And this is actually, you can get to this number via the query tool. So you're kind of mixing the query tool to select stops, and then you're um, creating a bike shed from what you've selected, right? 
So you're you're able to dig into the data to find a certain segment of the population that has access to um, the transit network, and then building a shed um, that would be representative of the those folks that might be there. They might be bikers because um, they don't have vehicles, right? They don't have um, cars, so um, so they're more likely to ride bikes. So you might have a market that you're looking at. Um, relative to this shed that you want to explore. So that's what PBES allows you to do is kind of mix the transit and the other types of, um, you know, uh, modes and look for relationships where you can, you know, create new markets and evaluate markets. Okay, so um, this is just an illustration of all of those different types that we just talked about. The one mile buffer on a point. Here's a linear buffer. Um, this is item A. I'll just go through and name them. Uh, item A is one mile point buffer. Item B is a one mile linear buffer. Um, item C is a freehand polygon. Um, item D is a traced uh, drive path. Item E is a uh, five minute walk shed from all stops on a route. Uh, item F is five minute wheelchair shed from all stops on a route. Now the wheelchair shed is something I'll, I'll stop on because not all areas have data for wheelchair shed. So you kind of have to be careful with that because there's a lot of specificity that goes into that, um, which includes um, you know, all the barriers for wheelchairs. And that includes gradients. Um, you know, they can't go really up and down um, you know, grades very well. So that also is an impediment to wheelchair access. So all that gets um, kind of put into that. And if your open street map doesn't contain that data in your locality, then um, you're not going to get a, a real um, you know, robust data set out of that. What's good about open street map is that you can actually change all of that if you have data. Um, you can go in and actually update OpenStreetMap to be reflective of what you want it to be. I know that's a, a tall order in a lot of cases, but I'm just saying um, it is an open data source, so you can actually go in and modify it if you if you need to. All right, so item G is a five minute bike shed from all stops and around, so that's a bike shed. Uh, item H is a 15 minute drive shed from a location, so you can see the drive shed from our origin point right here. And then item I is a 15 minute AM uh, transit shed. So the origin point is here, it's hard to see, I know, but um, you do see the accessibility to stops on the network from that location. Wow, okay, so here we have um, a lot of options for the mobility areas toolbar. So I'll just start. We've already really talked about this drop down uh, item number one mobility areas menu. The time distance selection menu um, is available. It depends on which what you're doing, which shed you're creating, and which um, type of mobility area. Um, all of um, the walk shed, wheelchair, bike, and drive all will have a time component to them. Everything else will not. There will be a distance component. So um, so just so you know that. And so if you want to input a time, then it can be a 10 minute, five minute, whatever you want it to be shed um, as well. So you can do distance or time. Item three is the create mobility, uh, mobility area interactively on the map. So that's where you um, choose your type, choose your um, timer distance and uh, your number, and then you click on the map to create it. Um, so that's that. And the, um, the next item four is select polygons as mobility areas. Oh, that's this item right here. So we're going to actually do, use this to bring in um, a shape in a shape file and add it as a mobility area. Um, the next item five is create market shed from selected features. So this is where you get into a really powerful aspect of this where you can select um, transit stop segments and routes and then create sheds from them. So um, that means that you can use any of the tools to do selections for stops or segments or routes. 
and then uh, create a watch shed or bike shed or um, different shed. So that's the example that we use the query tool to get after where the you know, percent of um, zero vehicle households is greater than 15%. Use the query tool. Then we came in and used a market shed from selected stops and built the shed, walk shed from those stocks, right? Or bike shed. So you combine the tool use to be able to do this. So we're going to do that for some of the analysis today. All right. Another really handy item here is to select routes or stops using the mobility area in uh, that's currently in the map. So that's what this is to be able to um, select the stops and uh, using the mobility area very handy. This is zoom to a mobility area and this is erase the mobility area from the map. Uh, we also have this reports menu here which is very powerful in and of itself. You have mobility area service reports. You have a SE summary, a land use summary, and transit network accessible um, from a uh, mobility area that's in the map. So this mobility area service reports, that includes um, service within an area and also uh, performance as well, both estimated and observed. So we'll tell you your perform observed performance if you have the APC stop ridership data in, and if you have a model run, it will tell you the estimated performance within an area. Okay. Now, so that was the toolbar. Once you have a saved mobility area here in this list, you also can right click on it and do a lot with it there. So um, you also you have the access to the mobility area reports, your network accessibility, um, your land use market analysis, SD market. You can make a copy of it. You can merge it with other mobility areas. Uh, you can actually move it to another transit system, and you can get the properties for it. We also have a feature in here now where you can erase a um, mobility area using another one. So we're actually going to use that function today. Okay, so this is the mobility serve, mobility area service summary. So whatever mobility area you have in your map, you can summarize the uh, data for it. So, um, so what this is saying is that um, for, um, yeah, so this is the service summary and this is the performance summary. So within the mobility area, the Northwest Mobility District, uh, route 4310, 23, and 75 are operating in that area. And what this is telling you is giving you the trip length inside of this Northwest mobility area. The headways, which would remain the same no matter what, the speeds are pretty much the same, although they can be different inside of areas. The number of stops that are served in total, the average stop spacing inside this area. Um, the revenue service trips, hours, miles, operating costs, all within this area only. So it's giving you um, a breakdown of your route level service inside of it and the percent of the route that's operating inside of that mobility area. So Route 10 has 25% of its service inside of this Northwest Mobility District. Likewise, Route 23 has 70%, 43 has 33, and, and 11% for 75, which is pretty cool to know what level of service is inside of this area. We also have it for the system level, where in total at the bottom, 4.3% um, of the total system service is within this district, and 27% on average of these routes. You also have for the totals, the total operating costs within this area, revenue service miles in total. So this is the totals line that gives you for everything. So you have a route level breakdown and then the totals for what's operating in this area. So from a service perspective, if you're trying to assess um, uh, rural areas or corridors or other districts or municipalities, and what kind of service or taxable areas or commission districts that you do want to report up and say, hey, you have X number of the service, um, your performance maybe isn't as great in here because we can also have another report here that gives you estimated ridership or observed ridership 
within that. So basically, this is a report that is very similar to this one, except it includes the ridership estimation and the performance variables and service variables in it. So, um, so that's another bonus of this is you can show your performance inside of this area as well. And all this is exportable to, um, you see this button export to uh, map data and export to Excel. So all of this can go out into those environments. Okay, so an example of this, um, we have all the mobility zones that are defined in Gainesville slash Gatorville. And um, so here is, that is a mobility area in TBUS and showing you all the routes that intersect the mobility zones. Um, and that's what's shown in here, right? So um, in some cases, all of the route six is within a, the mob mobility on demand zones and only part of route one is within a 40%, et cetera, right? So that's the breakdown of service within the zone. So this is um, a, a probably, um, this is an RTA, um, I'm sorry, not RTA, RTS, um, yes, routes, where it's saying the mileage portion uh, in county, city, University of Florida, um, not sure what this one is, but, um, oh, Santa Fe, maybe. So, um, so the, what percentage of the mileage is in each one of these? So essentially that is what this is telling you. So, um, this particular table is directly supported by, um, this report in TBEST. So, um, fixed route length and stop characteristics is directly supported, um, as part of, um, you know, your TDP development. All right, so not only can you do the service summaries and performance summaries, but you can also do market analysis. So, um, so what you can do is create a socioeconomic summary report. So this gives you very similar to the route level report that we showed earlier, socioeconomic summary, same variables and profiles and show demographic counts. All of that is the same setup, and also this map button is the same. But this is just showing for the a five minute walk shed, zero car household greater than 10% shed, right? Um, so that's what this map is of. And so that was building a query to create that and then um, doing the walk shed around the stops that um, met that criteria. And this is giving you the market variables that are within this area. So, um, yeah, so this is building um, the sheds and then doing the market analysis, the SE market analysis using the sheds, right? So um, you're now integrating the market analysis into this as well. And so that's, you can click this button to get to the map um, of this um, uh, socioeconomic report. And of course, all of this is um, exportable to ArcGIS as well. Okay, so again, with um, combining tools, and actually we've kind of already done this uh, particular one, not specifically this, but um, where on our network accessibility market analysis wizard, we had this accessibility spatial filter, and we selected the city of Gainesville as our filter area for our network accessibility, which filtered or condensed our accessibility to just be shown within the city of Gainesville. This one is a uh, you have park and ride 10 minute drive shed. So if you wanted to contain, um, if you have a park and ride and you want to contain your accessibility from transit to within the same shed as park and ride, then you can do that. And then you can compare the totals of my drive shed had X number of people that are accessible. And then my accessibility from transit had X number of people that were accessible. So then you can kind of do analysis on which mode is more effective for the um, accessibility. Okay. So import and exporting geometry for mobility areas. So um, this is kind of the process that we would go through to import a shape file or shape in a shape file or many shapes in a shape file. 
um, into a mobility area. So first of all, we used to add data um, in our map control. We've done that already. Remember, we added that background layer to digitize our, our route. Um, we can do the same thing with a polygon shape file. And in this example, it's the city of Gainesville boundary. And so we just added that as a as a layer in the TBS map. And then you can use uh, the polygon uh, type. And then there's a tool, a selection tool where you can select shapes in a shape file. And then those are immediately converted to a mobility area. And you can select multiple shapes in that shape file. And TBS will automatically bring them together and merge them into a single shape. So that when you save them as a mobility area, they are a single shape that can be analyzed. Um, and then once you have it saved, so you see it says city of Gainesville here, it was saved as it's that name. Then you can run all, you know, your um, market analysis on it. So here's a market analysis for the city of Gainesville um, specifically. Um, and this is the equivalent uh, in ArcMap where, you know, for population per acre um, uh, report that was done um, in a TDP, something very similar here is done in TBUS, right? And this is actually probably a little more specific being this, the city of Gainesville proper. Okay. Um, a few other examples here for mobility area planning. Um, so, and this is kind of your operations analysis planning. So, where planners look at multimodal access to transit as well as analyze emerging mobility options. So, um, in this map, we have our mobility on demand zones. So we have a shape file that we have packaged up with your data that is the mobility on demand zones. And this is a map that was published. Um, and this is what we wanted to import into TBUS. And we did do that through our mobility on demand zones existing route service in TBUS. So we were able to convert um, the data that was in these MOD zones, bring it into TBUS and do our analysis on it um, with our in relevance to fixed route transit for any of our scenarios. So it could be our base scenario, it could be our future year scenario where our service changes, and then we um, can see where our performance is better uh, within these areas where our services you know, increase or decrease within these areas. So it, it allows you to break up your, your transit service performance, markets, et cetera, and look at it by jurisdiction and geography um, rather than specifically by route. So that's really the point. And then also look at it in terms of access to other modes so that you can see first mile, last mile. You can look at it from the perspective of walk access or bike access. So it, it expands what we can do in TBS to a lot of levels that weren't necessarily there before. So um, so I think hopefully you can start to see the potential of, um, you know, what we can do with this both, um, you know, from you know, just a technical level, but also from a planning level of making all these tools work for you and bring out more data into your TDPs, your COAs, um, then you see best to uh, help you along with that. Okay, so before we get into the exercise, any questions? No questions yet. Okay. Um, all right, so let's get to. All right, so we're at 9.0 mobility areas. So um, exercise one is create a mobility area bike shed from a point on the map. Okay, so we're again in our June 2021 scenario, which is fine. It can be any scenario. Um, so I will just exit out of it and kind of clean up some of this and condense it. So, um, makes more sense. And kind of, yeah, so that's where I want to be. I want to condense this. So we're at fall 2021 and, um, 
sorry, June 2021, and just double click on that to open it. Okay, so um, we have our mobility areas toolbar open, and I just showed you earlier that it's here if it's not visible for you um, under the view bin. Um, so what we need to do is create a mobility area, and we want it to be a bike shed. So when we um, elect bike shed, automatically we're able to, to elect both distance and time. So either one of these is available to us. And we're going to select time. And the default number is 10 minutes, but you can edit that, obviously. If you click in that box, it will allow you to pop up this little dialogue and then change that number to whatever you want it to be. Okay. So automatically when we select this too, this gets enabled, this create mobility area from bike shed. So um, when we click on the map, anywhere on the map, it's going to show us a 10 minute bike shed from that location. So I'll just click, you know, in the downtown area. So um, let's actually, we'll zoom in. You can use a zoom to mobility area. So that zooms into it. Um, so if you come back to this point after my zoom, uh, I'm going to come back to this and I can click another point. So here is my new mobility area with a bike shed from that location. Likewise, I can do it from here. Right. And so um, if I hold down the shift key and click another point, it will actually add two of them to the map. And if I click a third point right here, um, it will actually bring them all together as a single bike shed. Okay. All right, so step five is create a service report using the mobility area toolbar reports, mobility area service summary, service summary. <laughs> now that's a lot of um, drilling in. But actually, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is to go to your reports, mobility area service reports, and the service summary. So when we do that, eBest is going to actually analyze the routes that are inside of this particular shed that I created. Your shed could look very different. This is just what I'm you know, popping up here at the moment. So. Um, so here are the routes that are within that shed. And there's quite a few because we're really hitting at the core of all the service. And so basically for every route, it, it analyzed that route and told me what's actually going on inside of this, these areas. So 30% um, of route one service is inside of this particular zone. So one of the good things about this is the map can kind of be controlled from here as well. So if I select route one or I click on it, it will then just show me route one in the list and likewise two. And I can shift click in here to then select them and show on the map as I want to, right? So um, that's something that's kind of unique here too is that you can control the map uh, display with the report. Okay, so um, just to get to it, the um, data here can be changed as well. So what we're showing is uh, weekday operating cost by default, which is 41,000 um, within this area uh, in total. But we can switch this, we can do AM peak. So if we wanna know the operating cost and the service within the AM peak, it will recalculate everything. And um, so here's our operating cost in the AMP, and that's 44% of the total system service is operating within this area uh, in the AMP. So, um, yeah, so we can get to Saturday, Sunday, and you can do an annualized summary from here as well. So, if you want to do annual, so here is the annualized uh, summary of service and cost that is specifically within these boundaries of this shed. Okay. Um, so let's save this. So basically what we wanna do is we'll close this report 
Um, I will let you know too that you have this export to Excel. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is our mobility area service report. That's fine. We'll just save it as the default and say yes. And it comes out here. Here's our um, our columns. And I do really like to do the borders before I do anything else. So I do my all borders and my you know my report looks great um, as an export. And I can see all that information as my logo, et cetera. All right. So I'll just save that. And I can also export the map data. So when I do that, um, this is going to be a data export. And this is my bike shed as a, the name of the file geodatabase. Do I want to open it in ArcMap? Yes, I do want to do that. So this is interesting to see how this kind of comes out in ArcMap too, right? So, um, so I don't know if you've ever tried to do routes in ArcMap, but they're a little bit hard to characterize. Um, and so this does a really good job of doing that in ArcMap too. So that, um, it has each one of the routes is color coded based on what came in from the GTFS. So it keeps the color coding scheme. Uh, all the labels are there. The labels are actually in their own uh, separate um, um, layer, right? So they're just points and they have the embedded uh, label in them. Um, so when you have the mobility area here. So all of this is now exported out and in its own file, it's really uh, a nice map that you can use um, for anything, right? Um, certainly for a TDP or an analysis that you might want to run. So I'll save that one. Okay. Sure. So um, now we want to save the mobility area itself. So if we go to the save button and we enter a name for this, this is going to be our, our bike shed. Um, in Gatorville. Bike shed Gatorville. All right, fantastic. So now it actually places a label here that says Bike Shed Gatorville. And um, we now have this in our list of mobility areas, Bike Shed Gatorville. So we can actually remove this. Little WebEx thing is in the way, sorry. Um, So this is the button to remove, clear the mobility area. So when I click that, it goes away. I no longer have a mobility area active, but I can always right click on this and open it and it brings it right back. What's good about these is that they are for the transit system, but you can also copy them. Um, you can also move them to other transit systems if you want to. And they can be applied to any scenario. So if you want to do a service report for the TDP 2030 or, or the no build or fall 2021 and see what services within the shed relative to the other scenarios, that's really what this is for is to be able to, to do that type of comparative analysis across scenarios based on the geography. Okay, so um, the instructions are to create um, mobility areas of various types. So um, let's clear this one again. Oh, sorry, clear. And um, so let's do a um, a polygon. So basically, I'm just going to freehand draw a polygon, polygon, and double click to end it. And that is a shape on the map that can be saved as a you know whatever a corridor, whatever you want it to be. The um, walk shed. And wheelchair shed, bike shed, drive shed all work in the same way where you can do a time. Um, so if you're going to do a, a drive shed, um, five minutes might be a better shed. So we'll limit that to five minutes and we'll start in this location. So here's our five minute drive shed from here. Uh, we also can do a five minute drive shed from any location here in the system and have that be part of our network. 
or part of our mobility area definition. Okay, um, let's go to drive path. Okay, so this one is going to require a distance. So you know that notice that it switched from time to distance because it not from at time is not available for this particular mobility area. But what it allows you to do is create a shortest path. So kind of like we're digitizing a route um, where it's going to take the shortest path between my cursor and the last waypoint that I click. So I can click a waypoint here, just like we did when we we're defining a route. And when I'm done, I can double click and it will create a buffer around specifically what I just drew at, all, along the road network. So that's kind of handy. Um, we also have the, um, the transit shed. So we do have this AM peak mobility build. So whenever you access a transit shed from here, it's going to say um, whatever build you have. So this is our 100 minute network accessibility build and we built it for the AM peak. If you remember that in our network accessibility module. So that activates it for a transit shed. So all we need to do actually, it's a five minute transit shed. That's not gonna go anywhere. So we need um, probably more like a 60 minute transit shed. And um, so then we can click on the map anywhere and what it will do, it'll, it'll go out to that OD matrix um, for the AM peak, the stop to stop travel times. And it will show us the accessibility through the network, the transit network to stop. So let's zoom to this. So here is our 60 minutes to different stops along the network. And as I mentioned before, before the further you get away from the origin, the smaller this little buffer becomes in terms of travel time. Right, so, um, and this takes into account transfers and everything relative to the network. Um, and I can click anywhere. So if I want to start that, make this my start point for the accessibility through the transit network. I can click here and all of a sudden my network accessibility looks very different. Likewise, I can probably click at this point. Um, this is. So with that. Um, this is the mall. This is the Oaks Mall, I think, at this point. So here's where you can get to from the mall with um, 60 minutes of transit travel time. So it's really a great visualization tool that you can use pretty uh, interactively. Like here's the airport. Where can I get to in the airport in six, or from the airport in 60 minutes? Well, here's that those destinations that you can get to um, as well. Okay, so we were tasked to show all of these mobility areas. I don't know. We didn't do all of them, but we did most of them, and a lot of them work the same. So, um, so we'll leave it at there and go to our next exercise. So we're now we're on step two. Create a walk shed mobility area for Route 88. Okay, so in this one, it has us opening the TDP 2030 scenario, but I, actually, I think we're going to stick to this one because I don't think we have it. Um, actually, we can do that. No, no, we have to do that because it's Route 88, um, which is only in that scenario. Okay, so we'll double click on our TDP 2030, and what we'll do is select Route 88 here. So here's our Route 88 that we created. And um, so we want to do a walk shed. So we'll go to walk shed and we'll do a, let's say a quarter of a mile, right? So distance of a quarter of a mile, that's fine. And so the next um, task is to do create a market shed from the selected features, which we have a market shed from our selected routes. So what this will do is it will take the stops on Route 88, all of the stops, and create a walk shed for all of them, and then merge them all together into one walk shed. So um, we'll let that go. So it's going to do some processing, go out and build the shed, and then return it. And this is the um, walk shed for the full route. So all the stops that are on the route creates a walk shed, merges them all together, 
um, via the sidewalk network and the road network. Okay, Rodney. Um, all right. Well, and I'll repeat Adam's question. Okay. <laughs> to the group. Uh, is there any way to chain together a multimodal approach, i.e., where you can get from sixty minutes of transit to, and five minutes of walking? Um, in a way, yeah. So, I mean, um, it depends on what you're doing. So, um. If you want to create a shed that contains both, is that the question? Yes, well, I, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think you can do that. Um, basically, um, you would use that sh shift click, right? So um, you can switch, like if you're on a walk shed and you uh, click on it and you create a shed, and then you can switch it to drive and then set your parameters for that and also click and it will merge them together. So you can merge multiple shed types um, into a single shed. That makes sense, right? So, um, so like for this one, I think that what I can do is I can say, well, I wanna create a walk shed and I'm going to shift click here and it should add it to this one, right? So I'm gonna do it, do it again, and I'll do a different spot. So now I've shift clicked it and added it. So it basically adds it together. Does that answer your question, Adam? He says amazing, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that also you could do this, you know, from the route stops as well, where you, you can change the, you know, the, the distance or the, the walk shed or bike shed, mm -hmm. for example, and then, you know, as Rodney did, um, create from the same features and then it'll just overlay it. It'll just add it to the same mobility area. So, um, yeah, definitely that you've never gotten that question before. That's it. But that's a, it's a great, uh, uh, question to ask. Mm -hmm. And Matt, I'm still, I'm sorry. I, I'm having trouble hearing you. You're a little faint on the headset. So. Not sure what's going on. We were fine before, so I don't know what's changed. Um, could be me. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so that's that, um, and you can merge them together, and that's fine. So the the questions are: use of mobility or reports to determine the following metrics. Which transit routes are in service within the Route 88 walk shed? Okay, that's interesting. So um, so what would we do here? So what we want to know is which ones are in service. So we can just do a service summary report using our walk shed. And it will tell us exactly which routes are in service in that shed for the weekday, for uh, let's say Sunday, it'll go and redo it. So these are the routes that are in service for Sunday. Um, and these are the routes for you know uh, night. So, yes, it will tell you that. What is the estimated ridership performance within the area in boardings per service mile? Okay, so we'll close that report and we'll go to our mobility area service reports and we'll do estimated performance summary. All right, so this is going to use the ridership estimation and show us for the weekday, uh, let's go to boardings per service mile. So our boardings per service mile is here. So it's 8.3 for the entire area. That's that question. Now, um, we can do the same thing, except we will do it for uh, observed performance. Oh, oh, sorry, we're in the wrong scenario. Um, uh, if we're in the June 2021 that has the stop level APC, we could tell you exactly what the ridership is, meaning because it's the observed at the stop level and aggregated up to this um, shed, um, what the exact ridership is on all routes in this kind of shed corridor and tell you what they are and their performance, um, et cetera, within it. So that's also a really, really great tool to have is to be able to summarize your performance 
uh, observed performance as well as estimated. Okay. What is the population density and employment within the lock shed? Okay, so that's um, go to reports and you get a socioeconomic summary. You get this summary report that looks a lot like our route level report. We talked about this earlier, it has the lock shed. Here's the total population. Um, population density is 1,839 per square mile. And um, and employment is 17,000 jobs. How many zero car households are within the shed? Okay, so here's our vehicle um, households at 4.7%. So if we show the demographic counts, the exact count is 105 households. Okay. All right, so our next one is our step three is to import mobility area geometry and summarize. Okay. So um, let's clear off our current mobility area. And we still have Route 88 selected, so we'll clear that selection too. And um, so we're going to add data. So map control add data is here. You can also go up to map and add data here. All right, so let's go to our, what we added? Um, it's like the MOD zones all. So that's this one. So everyone should have this in their um, CET best transit system gator build data shape files and MOD zones all should be in there and you can add that to the map. So let's go back to our map control because what we want to do is label this. So um, we double click on this MOD zones all. Uh, we can go to our labels and label this and with the name. And um, basically, if we hit apply here, we should now see which are the MOD zones that we're targeting, right? So that's good to have. Um, Um, ensuring mobility tour is visible. Yes, we have that. And so what we want to do is select MOD zone one. So we're going to come up to our mobility areas toolbar and we're going to select the polygon option. And instead of defining a polygon freehand, we're going to use this select polygon features as input to the mobility area. So if we click that button, and we come over to MOD zone one, which is right here, and we click on it, you see that it immediately converts that to a mobility area. What's great about this is that you can select a multiple. So if I hit my shift click, it will add to this selection. And then if I wanted to save that, I could. I think if I hit control click, it will deselect. So you can interactively select um, any of your shape files, uh, polygons, and create mobility areas from them. Okay, so but I think for this we just want MOD zone one, which we have selected. So we're going to come over to our save mobility area um, button. So that is different than the save scenario. So don't get those too confused. This one has a little geographic shape on it and uh, the save button. So uh, make sure you're looking at that. And um, so we're going to enter the mobility area name, and that will be MOD zone. I don't think we. No, we already have it. Sorry. Um, let's make it a little bit of a different name. Um, zone one uh, training. So MOD zone one training over. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and clear out our inner map control. We no longer need this MOD zones all. So we can just right click on it and remove it. And so now we're just left with our MOD zone training uh, mobility area. So that's awesome. All right, so we're going to ask some more questions of this. So what routes are operating inside of MOD zone one and what are the total weekday revenue miles? All right. Um, so what routes and 
weekday revenue miles. So here are the routes and weekday revenue miles is 755.1. What is the weekday cost of operating fixed routes within it? The cost is 6,651.4. How many stops are served during the weekday and are there in the MOV zone one? So there are 136 unique stops here. So what you need to know about this is that this may not total up to that because it doesn't double count the total. So these are the unique stops that are served um, because Route 15, 24 and 25 may all serve the same stop multiple times, um, but we only want the unique stops. So this number represents the unique count and that may not total up. So just keep that in mind that this is the unique stop count inside the, the mobility area. Okay, let's see. Um, how much population and employment are in it? So, um, so we'll come out of this and go to our um, socioeconomic summary, population 15,241 and 14,523 jobs. Um, yeah, so let's select the stops and find how much the estimated rise up there is for the current routes um, within MOD zone one. Okay, so let's do this. This will be interesting. So what we can do is refresh the selection for stops. So here we have the stops that are selected. Now we can come up to our interactive reporting and go to our stop ridership and use the selected, oh, I'm sorry, the selected stops only for the estimated. And we can even do uh, a total ridership um, map rendering, hit apply. Okay, so here is our report for the stops that are within this um, mobility area and their directed transfer boardings and total boardings, and then the total at the bottom for all of the stops that are in it, and the map rendering here as well. So we can export this data out to um, GIS as well. So whatever we have here, we can export it out and it can be used outside of TBUS. When I close this report, um, those renderings go away and I can then clear the stop selection if I want to, so we'll clear that off. And we're just left again with our mobility area. Okay, so, um, so we're gonna use mobility areas a little more coming up. So, um, so that's good. So any questions on what we just did?